Luke chapter number 3 begins, Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Ituria, and of the region of uh, Traconitis, Tracona, whatever that guy's name is, Traconitis, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene. Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, uh, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath of come. Let me just stop right there. Sometimes you think I'm rough. I didn't call you a bunch of snakes, so there you go. Verse number four or verse number eight says, Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered, And saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him to do likewise. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. And as the people were in expectation, all, uh, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you for being a good God. Lord, this uh, week we have offered thanksgiving because of the bounty and the blessings that you have supplied. And Father, we certainly are reaping far better than we have sown, and we bless your holy name. Now, Father, I pray as uh, our nation and as society enters this uh, holiday season of Christmas, Lord, I pray that many would realize what Christmas is really all about. It's not about tinsel. It's not about twinkling lights. Uh, Lord, it's about the fact that God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son into the world that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, God, I pray we'd see many come to Christ during these days. Uh, Father, I pray for the less fortunate ones that, God, You would supply their needs. Uh, and Father, we certainly pray in the crowd this size, you'd meet every need of every heart. We pray if there be any amongst us today who do not know you as free, in the free pardon of sins, uh, they're strangers to the grace of God. Uh, we pray that you'd open their eyes to truth. Uh, and God, I pray they'd give their heart and life to Jesus before it's everlasting too late. Uh, now, Father, bless in his service. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, Glorify your name, and Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. In these verses, we find the message of John the Baptist. John preached baptism for the remission of sins, 
and works meet for repentance. John had a works salvation. You had to be baptized to be saved, and you had to prove you'd repented by bringing uh, works to the equation uh, uh, to show what had happened in your heart. I'm glad that we're no longer under the law. I'm glad we're no longer under a work salvation. Uh, I'm glad that Jesus came full of grace and truth, uh, and He paid our sin debt. Uh, because there's nothing that we could add to uh, or do anything uh, uh, to merit the favor of God. Uh, we are what we are by the grace of God. Uh, and God through His marvelous grace made a way uh, that sinners could be saved from their sin, uh, uh, plus nothing, minus nothing, uh, by putting their faith in the finished works of Calvary and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior. Uh, what could we bring to God? That's why God gave His best for us. We see the message of John the Baptist, but notice the musing about John the Baptist in verse 15. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John whether he were the Christ or not, they began to ponder and muse and meditate and question and talk amongst themselves, is he the Christ? You see, you have to understand from Malachi to Matthew is about 400 years that uh, God had sent no prophet to Israel. To put that in perspective, that's a whole lot longer than America's been a country. They'd had no clear light from heaven. And now all of a sudden this wild man shows up, not dressed in the Pharisee uh, uh, rabbinical garb. Uh, he shows up in camel's uh, hair and leather, uh, eating wild locusts and honey and preaching, uh, uh, prepare ye the way, uh, uh, the Lord's are coming. Uh, you need to repent and be baptized for remission of sins. And oh, what a message he had. He was full of zeal and gumption. He was a wild man. It amazes me in the year 2021, preachers are supposed to be so calm and we're supposed to sit on stools and and have a microphone in our hand and, you know, try to entertain people along the way. Uh, I believe it was uh, uh, D. Martin Lloyd-Jones said, uh, I didn't come to entertain you, I came to preach to you and pull you out of hell. Mm -hmm. Can I say they mused whether or not he was the Christ. But notice that John tells them there was one mightier than John on the way. Look, if you will, in verse 16. He says, uh, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. And I say, what an illustration between the wheat and the chaff. Hmm? We don't know much about these things today because uh, we want grain, we go to Kroger's. We go to a feed store. But they would grow the wheat. Mm, Brother James, they would take it to a threshing floor and they would beat it and uh, the chaff would blow up in the air and blow away. The wheat would fall onto the threshing floor and they'd sweep it up and gather the wheat. But Brother Ray, the interesting thing about wheat and chaff, you can't tell the difference till it's harvest time. And looking around here, we all look the same. We're all dressed nice. We're all human beings. We're all in the house of God. The thing of it is, we don't know who's wheat and who's chaff in here today. But I'm telling you, there's a great harvest day coming. And the Lord's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Um, but he said, there's one mightier than I on the way and John said I baptize you with water he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire and with God's help I want to preach for just a few minutes this morning on the fire of God you know what separates the wheat from the chaff the fire of God hmm. and I wonder how come we're not on fire for God it didn't say only then would he baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire, but 2021, the fire be out. Didn't say that. He said, He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and if you got saved by the good grace of God, 
the moment you got saved, you got sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, uh, and you got all of the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get. But where's the fire? Hmm? Well, let me give you a few things on the fire of God this morning. I want to say, first of all, there's the beckoning fire. In Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 2, you're familiar with this story. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, who Moses, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush, bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Can I say that a lot of people say, i got spiritual burnout. Can I say that is not scriptural? That bush was burning, but it wasn't consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush uh, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Can I say there is beckoning fire? Uh, 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 there is the point uh, uh, where you are uh, uh, in your sin. You are lost without God. You didn't know God existed. Uh, you didn't know anything about God. Somebody told you about the Lord. Uh, uh, you met somebody. The Lord had changed their life. Uh, and you realized they had something you didn't have. Uh, and it began to beckon unto you. Uh, and it began to call unto you. Uh, uh, some of you are here today because somebody invited you. Uh, but you are a stranger to the things of God. Uh, you don't really know know what we're talking about when we talk about being saved from our sin uh, you don't have the peace of God in your soul uh, you don't have the joy of the Lord as your strength uh, you don't have uh, oh the presence of God in your life uh, but yet God's a beckoning you it's called conviction you realize you're lost you realize you're a sinner you realize that if Jesus came now or if you died uh, you die in your sin and go to hell. And that fire that is beckoning you, that stirring in your soul, that voice that you hear every now and then says, you need to be saved. Uh, that's the fire of God beckoning you. Mm -hmm. and Jesus said, no man will come to the Father except he be drawn. Now there's a lot of misconception, Brother Doug. There are people who think they've got to hear the audible voice of God to be drawn think they've got to be in some kind of lightning bolt in the sky to know it's their time. And the truth of the matter is, all we need to do is know we're lost. And once you know you're lost, i got good news, you can get saved. Mm. There's the beckoning fire of God that God draws you. God puts people in your life. Uh, 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 God will show you something. Uh, you're driving down the road. You see a church, and all of a sudden, uh, your mind goes, uh, I need to be saved. Uh, uh, you can be watching television, uh, and all of a sudden, there's a commercial, and there's a Noah's Ark scene in the background, and something says you need to be saved. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, in the midnight hour, when you can't sleep, uh, uh, you're hearing this uh, uh, sorry, no good, screaming preacher in your mind saying, you need to be saved. You need to be saved. Uh, that is the beckoning fire of God trying to draw you you to salvation uh, draw you from your sin thank God for the beckoning fire of God I didn't understand it all till I got saved and I still don't understand a whole lot of it but I'm sure glad that God drew me out of from where I was uh, David said I was in a horrible pit uh, uh, but the Lord reached down and he pulled me out uh, and he put me on the solid rock I'm glad the Lord uh, came down to where we was to get us out of our sin uh, God will save you from your sin, friend. Can I say beckoning fire draws you to God? Beckoning fire will defile you before God. You see, until Jesus Christ came and revealed through the Apostle Paul that the law was given as our schoolmaster to bring us to the knowledge of sin, and, and if we had no law, then we would not have sinned. And can I say what preaching does? It reveals to us we're not right with God. And beckoning fire will defile you before God. It'll make you realize you're the enemy of God. That your sin is keeping you from God. Makes you guilty before God. It amazes me. Miss Annette likes watching some of them Dateline programs where uh, uh, all these people commit these horrible crimes and all these people never, they're not guilty. You know, they, they find the... The, the blood, they find where they buried the body, they find everything, but they're not guilty, they're not guilty, they're not guilty. Can I say, when you stand before God, you know what you are? You're guilty. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. 
but it's that beckoning fire, fire that shows you you're defiled before God. You're a sinner. There's nobody going to kick open the doors of heaven and say, yep, I deserve to be here. Mm. That beckoning fire draws us to God. It defiles us before God, but it makes you dependent upon God. When you realize you can't save yourself, friend, then you can get saved. You can't earn your way into heaven. You can't work your way into heaven. You can't buy your way into heaven. Uh, you can't con your way into heaven. Uh, the only way you'll get to go to heaven is through the shed blood of Calvary. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. Uh, hey, uh, He shed His blood for you. Uh, his blood is our propitiation. Uh, and friend, uh, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You must depend on God to be saved. Uh, it's that beckoning fire that will change your life. And I say there's not only the beckoning fire of God, there's the blazing fire. Thank God for the blazing fire. Daniel chapter 3, verse 23, you know this story. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished or astonished. He rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. Uh, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. How do you know what God looked like? Because there's no mistaking when Jesus shows up. Huh? But there was blazing fire. That furnace had been heated up seven times hotter than it had ever been heated up before. Uh, and when they opened the doors, uh, the guards were consumed. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down into that furnace bound. Uh, but when the king looks in, uh, they're loose, uh, walking around. Uh, there's no hurt on them. Uh, hey, and there's a fourth man in the fire with them. Uh, and they're blazing in the fire. Uh, and there's something different about them. Uh, can I say hallelujah, thanks be unto God, uh, to those that's been through the fire uh, and been there with God. Uh, hey, they make a difference in this world. Uh, can I say blazing fire shows the presence of God in your life. When Moses came down from the mountain, his face shone. Mm. Those that have been close to God, you can tell it. They don't have to tell you. Matter of fact, I always worry about somebody that tells me how close they are to God. Mm. You can always tell somebody that's been around God. You can see the presence of God in their life. Uh, can I say, uh, 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 those that have blazing fire have the protection of God on their life. Uh, those fellows, I mean, if, you, if most of us fell down in a burning fire as furnace, we're, we're crispy critters. Not them fellows. You see, they made a stand for God. They were not going to bow to some false idol or image. They made a stand for God, and they said, even if he doesn't save us, uh, 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 trust me. He said, he'll save us out of your hands, king. Yep. Mm -hmm. They was ready to die for their faith, yet their faith revealed who they were. Mm -hmm. Showed God's protection on their life. And I say this, blazing fire shows the purpose of God in your life. The king made a decree that everybody had to worship the gods of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because he was the only god. Hmm? Uh, when you have blazing fire, people don't have to, you don't have to tell people you've been with God. They know. Matter of fact, they know if you've met with God on Sunday when you show up on work on Monday. They know. Mm, this may rub feathers the wrong way, but you don't have to worry about your life safest place you can ever be is in the center of God's will you say what about this new variant I don't care about variants or varmints either one you know why there's a new variant because the vaccine's not working they got to come up with an excuse and it isn't an amazing they, they said it comes from Africa yet the nations that it comes from they don't have a COVID problem But isn't it amazing this variant only attacks really children? Because we've got to get rid of all these children's vaccines. Listen, I don't care if you get a vaccine or not. You know, it's just a glorified flu. Isn't it amazing? For 18 months we didn't have any flu. Now all of a sudden they want you to get flu shots. Uh, it's an amazing thing. 
It's all about people, keeping people afraid, making them fearful, depending on the government to take care of you. Well, I've got good news. I depend on God to take care of me. You want a vaccine, get a vaccine. I don't care. You know, i got shingles vaccines. I've had mumps vaccines. I've had small box vaccines. Uh, get your vaccine. I don't care. But listen, if that's what you're trusting in, you're in terrible shape. Uh, I realized a long time ago, it can't come to me unless it comes through the hand of God. Mm. Can I say this? also reveal the purpose of God for your life. Why are you here? God didn't save you so you can get a good job, you can have a nice house, you can drive a nice car, you can, you can have some of the nice things in this life, you can get to go to Kroger's once a week and buy groceries, uh, and you can be a good citizen of the U.S. and, you know, salute to when the flag comes by. That's not why God saved you. God saved you to bring honor and glory to Him. And he left you here so you could be a light to sinners so they too can see what they need in their life. Now when folks look at you, do they see the blazing fire of God? Or do they see somebody loaded down with the same problems they got? Blazing fire will consume all them problems. Matter of fact, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't have any problems while they was in that furnace. Huh? I really believe somewhere in there, one of them guys said, Lord, you got a sweater? It's kind of cool in here. Hmm. He's in there worshiping, having a time. Hmm. I say there's beckoning fire. There's blazing fire. But then there are some who are baptized by the fire. We know baptism by fire is a statement, but let me give you the scripture on it. 1 Peter 1, 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ you see if your, fo if your faith is not tested it is worthless when you are baptized by the fire you are being proven and can I say it proves your faith John preached baptism under repentance, but we're not saved under John's baptism. We're saved under Jesus' baptism. You say, well, what are you talking about, preacher? Jesus was baptized in the wrath of Almighty God, just as uh, uh, the ark was baptized uh, in the storm cloud of 40 days of rain uh, 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 and uh, uh, the turmoil of God's wrath. Uh, uh, Jesus was baptized in the wrath of God on Calvary uh, when He bore your sin and my sin up Calvary's mountain uh, and He emptied Himself of His life's blood. Uh, it is that baptism, uh, the shed blood of Calvary, that saves us, my dear friends. Uh, but your faith is proven by the baptism of fire. The trial of your faith. Tried by fire. And I say it proves your faith, but it also purges your flesh. I was teaching my Sunday school class, we that are believers have two natures. You have the fleshly nature, the old man, and you have the spiritual nature, the new man. The one you feed the most will be the strongest. And you go through the fire to purge your flesh. Paul said he crucified it daily. He died daily. You and I have to die out to this flesh every day because this flesh is a big green-eyed monster. It shows up. It wants to do what the flesh wants to do. And the flesh usually don't want to do spiritual things. That's why it's so hard to get out of bed on Sunday morning. You can get up for work at 5 o'clock in the morning on Monday, but Sunday, that alarm goes off 8 o'clock and you're, you're struggling, hitting the snooze button. Why? This flesh don't want to get out of bed. Your flesh has no problem reading your emails, but your flesh has a problem reading the Scriptures. Your flesh has no problem talking on the phone, but your flesh has a problem when you get on, on your knees in prayer and talk to God. Your flesh has no problem sitting down watching a movie or a ball game, but your flesh has a problem coming and sitting in the house of God because uh, the flesh isn't saved. And so going through this fire... And sometimes we go through trials to purge this flesh so that the spiritual man comes forth and directs our life. But it's also this, this flesh not only proves, or this fire not only proves uh, our faith and, and purges our flesh, 
but there's a couple examples in the scriptures where God is the potter and we're the clay. Now, back in the day, Brother Brian, the potter would go and extract the clay from the earth. Then he'd put it on his wheel. And then he'd begin to apply some water to it and make it real pliable. And he'd put his hands on it, got to work in it. Then he would shape it, smooth it out. And then he would fire it. And then after he fired it, he would paint it or he would glaze it before he'd fire it. But it was always a finished product when he put his signature on it. You see, we're of this world. But he came to where we were and he extracted us out of this world when he pulled us out and saved us. And he put us on his wheel and he put his hands on us. Hallelujah, thank God. And he started pouring the water of the word of God. And he began to smooth out the rough edges of our life and began to shape us and mold us and everything. Uh, and neighbor, uh, we may look like the rudiments of this world, but we're not of this world. Uh, we may sound like the world, uh, but we're not of the world. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, he's uh, putting us through the fire, uh, but one of these days, uh, uh, he's going to pull us out and polish us uh, and put his name on us. Uh, and hey, uh, he is polishing us. We're being polished by the Father in the fire. And I bless his name. Now sometimes the pottery cracks in the fire. Sometimes people crack under pressure. But I'm glad that's when he gets out the oil. And I've seen this done. They'll mash up that pottery that's been in the fire that's cracked. They'll mash it up into a powder. And they'll put oil on it. And he'll start remaking it. And it starts getting some substance to it. And he starts reshaping it to, and then he puts it back in the fire. Guess what? It don't crack this time. Uh, that oil has something to do it. Uh, again, the oil's a picture of the Holy Ghost. Uh, hey, and he just puts the Holy Ghost in our life. Uh, hey, even when uh, uh, we've blown it, we cracked under the pressure, uh, here comes God, uh, and the Holy Ghost begins to do a work in our life. Uh, and he begins to build us up uh, and put some consistency in our life. Uh, and when we go through that fiery trial again, we won't crack uh, in our all be to the praise of God uh, and there's the baptism by fire can I say this then there's burdensome fire and I love Galatia, or Jeremiah chapter 20 verse number 9 and the Bible says Jeremiah says then I said I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name and Jeremiah quit He'd been preaching for a while, never seen anybody get saved. Now he's in derision daily. They're mocking him, making fun of him. He's been imprisoned. He says, that's it, I'm done. I'm not going to speak anymore in his name. But the verse didn't stop there. There's a little conjun conjunction. He says, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. He said, I tried to keep my mouth shut, but I just couldn't. He said, that little fire that was in my bones got to smolder, and then it got to burn, and then it got to blazing. And he said, I was weary with forbearing, I couldn't stay. He said, I had to let it go. There's burdensome fire. That's that fire that compels you to go on when you want to quit. Nobody likes being talked about nobody likes being lied on nobody likes uh, being abused for their faith sometimes you feel like you're on an island you're the only one doing something for God you want to quit but there's a little flickering starts happening in your soul and God's been so good to you you think I just can't quit he's just so good see that's that burdensome fire that just compels you to keep going on that burdensome fire will also help conquer your flesh, your fears, and your foes. It's that burdensome fire. That fire that only you and God understand. And then, my dear friends, one of these days, that burdensome fire is going to provide you a crown for God's glory. Amen. There's something about 
the burden of a child of God. We go through life carrying these heavy burdens, but one of these days we're going to lay them down at Jesus' feet. And I thought about this. One of these days there's going to be bidding farewell fire. Oh yeah, I like Second Kings chapter 2. Verse number 11, And it came to pass as they still went on, Elijah and Elisha, and talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and they parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Hmm? Uh, Say, so what happened? He went out in a blaze of glory. That's what happened. Uh, let me just say this. You don't have to limp into heaven. You can go out glorifying God. You can go out living for God, serving God. I listen to some songs, I listen to some preaching, they talk about how bad and how terrible it is being saved. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I have a time of my life. A preacher friend of mine sent me a message, I guess he's preaching it to his church this morning. I looked at the title, it said, When did God stop coming to church? I'm like, well, he had ours. He shows up on a regular basis. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I'm thinking, the only time I, I see where God quits coming around is when he stamps Ichabod on it. And if you're in that shape, whoa. But a lot of churches have been turned into museums. You don't have to limp out, friend. You can go out in victory. huh? Elijah went out in the fire. Stephen went out on fire. And Paul went out through the fire. Are you listening? Huh? Thank God for the fire of God. You can listen to the beckoning call and trust Christ as your Savior today if you're lost. If you're here today and you're saved, you can get on fire for God and everybody around you know it. Huh? Hey, if you get in the book, when life gets hard, you'll find a burden fire that'll keep you going. Huh? Are you listening? One of these days we're going out. Hallelujah, you ought to go out on fire for God. Or you can ignore everything I say. You can deny Christ, and you'll burn in the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You're here sitting here this morning, and you die and go to hell. It will not be this church's fault. It will not be God's fault. It won't be this preacher's fault. It won't be these people's fault. They, they kept the doors open so you could come this morning. I've tried to preach a message to you so you didn't. You don't have to die and go to hell. God cared so much about you, He let you come and give, gave you life and let you live long enough to hear this message. But now the choice is yours. I'm reminded the preacher was preaching. The preacher's name was Melvin Sisson preaching on hell young lady in the crowd said I will not believe in that I will not submit to that she stormed out of the church got mad got in her car and took off three miles down the road she hit a tree head on died and went to hell friend you you don't have to believe anything I said but you do have to stand for God one day I'd rather have the fire of God burning in my heart than for me to spend all eternity in the lake of fire because I rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. You may think you got plenty of time. That young lady did. But she didn't have plenty of time. See, your choice has eternal consequences. If you're not saved, I'd run to an altar and get saved. We don't know when the Lord's coming back. But I'm looking around this old world. And friend, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's getting close. Could come today. But even if he don't, you don't know if you'll live tomorrow. Hmm. There are people dying of COVID. There are people dying of the flu. There are people dying of cancer. There are people who die in car crashes. There are people who die of heart attacks. There are people who are dying 6,500 people every hour die. Since we've been here in church, 6,500 people went out into eternity, most of them to a devil's hell. 
How about you, friend? Do you have the fire of God in your heart? If not, you can. You can know the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Don't die and go to hell, friend. Christian friend, you know what separates the men from the boys, so to speak? The fire of God. Why don't you let God's fire flame in your life? Why don't you fall in love with Him again? Fall in love with the book again. Fall in love with the things of God again. Get back on fire again because you make a difference in other people's lives when you do. The fire of God is what matters. It's what separates us, friend. Will you let God set a fire flame in your soul? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll come, get a song of invitation. Folks are already coming. If you're not saved, why don't you just come? Put your faith in the Lord. Say, somebody's in my way, preacher. They'll get out of your way. Why don't you come? While they're getting a song ready, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for the fire of God. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here not saved, Lord, in my heart, I believe there is. God, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Open their eyes. Speak to their hearts. May the beckoning fire of God draw them to repentance. God, I pray the ones that saved and they've let their fire become just a smoldering smoke, I pray that, Lord, you'd set them ablaze again. God, do a work in folks' hearts and lives that others might see the goodness of God and come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Now, bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. Save that one nearest hell, Father. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.